good morning. This morning we're in, uh, well, currently near Mosedale. Uh, four way and rights today. And a wild camp on Great Calver. Uh, not sure if the four way and rights have got a name as a group. Uh, but decided just like yesterday's ill fated trip to uh, park nearest to the start point, uh, finish point, sorry, so that uh, the majority of the walking is at the start. Transferred everything over to my uh, rucksack while camping one. Uh, <laughs> weighs an absolute ton. And just before I, before I got here, there wasn't a breath of wind. Absolutely roasting. And this ro this road that I'm on, it's oh, it's so much longer than I, th I thought. Like do from doing my research, so driving along it and the conditions, I was just like, there's no chance I'm doing this whole hike with with that massive bag on my back. That and water sources have been sparse this week and there's been some becks that have been incredibly dry and obviously with me not knowing the area although I've got a water filter and a water carrier uh, I put a, a litre and a half bottle of water in my bag as well as well as my two and a half litre bladder which was quite the squeeze to fit in so I've not bothered taking that I've just put a, a litre and a half bottle in this bag and the drone so Hopefully the drone gets its first flight, so I'm a bit nervous about that as well. Try getting out, practicing with it a bit before I come, but either conditions weren't right for them or just not have time. So in at the deep end with that one maybe. And luckily, uh, just parked up, uh, just kind of off the road, got talking to this uh, Mother and daughter, I'm assuming. Um, and just behind where we parked, there's a bit of a hill down, and it's an amazing looking pool. So when when it's fast flowing, you can use the rockers like a water slide. But although you can't now, it's still deep, and they went in playing with the dogs and that. So when I get back down. It's a potential plan there before I uh, get the big bag on and head up. Uh, but yeah, just another amazing day. And the scenery around here is absolutely stunning. Yeah, so first. Do this long walk through to uh, Mosedale. Past the coffee shop that said it opens at 10. It was half past now when I drove past. It's got to be 10 now. So that might be tempting to get a bit of pre fuel in it. Uh, I'm going to make his way north of Mosedale to, uh, I can't remember what it's called, the, uh, what it's called 12 Stones, something like that. But that's the approach path up to Carrick Fell, which apparently is the only sort of real like proper climb of the day supposedly very steep uh, so walking poles been deployed uh, then bloody hell my brain's mushed today oh, what's the other one high pike then down to knot and then across to great calver apparently once you're up there it's just the only ups and downs is to get onto the different peaks. Apparently, it's like a massive open, almost sort of just field, uh, and very few people on them, other than maybe locals walking the dogs and stuff like that. So, looking forward to it. It's going to be an absolute sweat fest again, but should be nice and chilled. Not time pressure or anything like that, because, uh, like I say, so far this week when I've supposed to wild camped or even when I've put tons at campsite. Uh, it's just been sort of waiting around. I were in a pub yesterday for nearly two hours. 
Uh, I mean, I was trying to find a campsite for last night. Uh, so I ended up at uh, Coldbeck campsite. Because on the map it looked really close to here. It was still a half an hour drive. But, yeah, it was nice, really nice. Eight quid, absolute bargain. Uh, possibly the only thing that hasn't uh, <laughs> had COVID tax with. But, anyway, I'm going to try and not waffle on this one because uh, the spare GoPro battery I put in the wild camping bag and I forgot to transfer it to this bag and I think I've got about 35% left. Although, that one battery's done me since Tuesday, so not been too bad to be fair. Better than I expected them to be. But, yeah, that's probably it until we get close to Carrickfell. Just walked about a mile from the car into Mill Moresdale. Just as you dip into Moresdale. Well, I think I already mentioned about the uh, coffee shop that I saw. Uh, so I'll just have a nosy, nosy outside. Then the bloke comes up and says, like, morning. It's like a coffee. I'm like, oh, it's a bit hot. I do with the water though. But, yeah, no problem at all. I'm expecting a bottle of water because I've got a litre and a half in, in my bag. I thought it'd be nice to have a, a smaller bottle to have on the side pocket and top it up so I'm not having to stop it all the time. Uh, comes out with a... Morning. <laughs> Here it comes out with a <laughs> massive glass of water nice of him. And I saw the food list, didn't I? And now I'm uh, about six quid lighter. <laughs> really lovely little place. It's in a little church. Well, church looking type thing. It must be quite religious as uh, as churches tend to be. Um, saw a little leaflet on every table about Quakers, but got some lovely uh, artwork in there. Uh, all for sale apparently. No prices, any reasonable donation. But... <laughs> Which some I'd never do because I don't want to offend. But there we go. Sheep coming up. Uh, so yeah, just thought I'd mention that. I had uh, toasted fruit loaf, something like that, and then I've got a bit of uh, date and walnut cake to take up with me. Uh, 
I'll say now, we've got about 20% left, we're uh, very conscious of running out of battery here. Yeah. I found it, apron full of stones it's called. Uh, I weren't lying when I said it's a steep old path, just that diagonal there that runs up. I don't whack a right nice one in this heat. Let's see what I make it. There you go. I'd say we might be just under halfway up, maybe. I must say, from bottom, looks like it's a like, path almost non existent, but it's a good path, it's a good trail. But just stopped to put my walking poles away because. Now it's really climbing and it's so dry and dusty, all these little pebbles. Very, very slippy. Uh, lost my foot in a couple of times slipping. So I'm going to put these poles away and then if I need to, I can always use my hands for it. You climb quickly, but you work for it from minute one. Oh, well, they weren't lying when they said it was steep. Christ, that was sketchy. I was not comfortable one bit with that last bit. If I had to come up with my camping stuff on my back, then Jesus Christ. All that dust and shale. Oh, I'm literally scrambling up that hands and knees all the way from since the last, pretty much all the way since the last time I fell filming. Oh, Christ. Oh. It's opened up again now. I think Carrot Fell's just over the brow of there. Near the summit. Big gusts of wind. Catching my breath back. There's two bloody parachutes over, over there. You can see white one. There's a orange one. Somewhere. Oh, there's two orange. Two orange there and a white one over there. Mental. Respect. But mental. Well, it's one of those summits. Ever since the last bit, I was uh, not genuinely scrambling. I was not comfortable at all for that. But once I get to the top of this bit, I have a stop for a walk, I'll admit it. Got to the top, I thought I've gone wrong. There's something on the left that looks like it should be it. Built to map. No, you still got a fair way to go. Climbed over, then you get to a boulder field that goes up that's actually really quite nice. You can always kind of see the trail, but you can sort of pick your own path. It's nice, really nice. Then you come to another section. And now I've seen the summit again. So what a slog that was. Oh. oh, there don't seem to be any flying ants like a video I've seen before. A few is across there. Mental. I believe that's where I'm going. Over there and round. Uh, I've just seen a flying ant, never mind. Uh, got all your fells there. I'm going to have to get my map out and. Uh, Jesus, them parachutes are bleeding now, paraglides, whatever they are. I need to get my bearings a bit, so I need to see which fells are which. I don't know.
we go. High pike. Nice little uphill, uphill walk that. Got a bench. Here is a portion of that loveliness that once made, once he made more lovely. Oh, cute. Oh. Oh no, not this way. London, great. <laughs> Binzy, see. That's hiding. Uh, so it's pretty much. Oh, the town's not the. Uh, so that's interesting. Carrick Fell, which is there. One and three quarter miles that. It's a lovely walk. You get just at the bottom of that trail and it feels like you're forever away from it. But really good summer that I enjoyed that. So I believe that's the path we're going back down. I think one of these two is not. But we'll soon find out. Oh aching today. Well, ladies and gentlemen, break time. Lingy Hut, I didn't realize it were here. It's a long way from High Pike to uh, not. Went the bloody wrong way as well. Said in a previous video, I'm a creature of habit. Oh, this looks uh, familiar, and we're on the path there back to bloody Carrick Fell, which is all the way over there now. That breeze is amazing, look at that for a shot. What a stunning day. So, I'm gonna get my bag off and get my feet up in Lingy Hook for a bit, I think. And we'll carry on to Knot. There we go. Finally arrived at Knot. Oh. Oh. Bit of a slog, that one. Leaving Lingy Hut, it's a bit difficult in places to see the uh, the route. Uh, I will say the route as a whole, in winter or after a bit of rain, it's going to be an absolute bog. So definitely at least wear waterproof socks. Jesus Christ, some of that you can tell, it's still really soft and springy underfoot. No moisture in it, because apparently it's not rained at Lady District for nearly five weeks. That's some cream in my eye. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's definitely parts where after a bit of rain you won't want to uh, Well, not that you won't want to, but you think you're going to get wet. Uh, so I believe that is Great Calva. It's the last way I'm right to do today. I'll show you the route that we've done. Looks amazing. Got Carrot Fell in the distance there. Just drop down up to High Pike. Down, you can just about maybe see Lingy Hut there, and you've got a couple of uphill sections up, up to here. But still, still that little hair's hanging about. But the views are just amazing. So, just some two little uphill bits there. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely in no rush to get me uh, my big bag on and come back up uh, Great Calver. But yeah, if, it, if the wind is still uh, non-existent at the bottom and it's really warm, I'm gonna dive into that plunge pool, or that bit of water, whatever it is. And then I might make a meal down there. And then I think I've got, oh, I can't remember, I think I've got ch chili rice and then an all day breakfast. But I've also got some porridge in a little Ziploc bag. So I might, might have the chilli at the bottom while I'm just killing time waiting for the hours to, to go. And then I might have, in true Yorkshire style, the uh, all day breakfast and my tea when I get to the top. Along with a few beers, part three instead of normal two I've had this week. So 
but all right there we go There she is. Very close to the final worm right over there. Let's do this in style, eh? Oh, there she is. Oh. <sighs> Weird little there. Uh, oh God. There you go. Oh. Midge is lovely. I think you can see full root here. It's got <sighs> carrot fell, which will be that one over there. Over to High Pike. Over to Knot. I mean, just about to see the little summit stones. All the way down, must have come down maybe 200 meters, maybe. So that's 710. This one's 690. To be fair, the downward slope was a lot more difficult than the upwards one, but this last bit, a definite bit of a slog. So, just gonna scout about a bit, see where it's gonna be suitable to pitch. That's rocky as out. I've heard there's only very few places to pitch with it being so rocky underneath. I think maybe here. But we'll have to see. Yeah, I should take some water on and then find the path down. I'm sure I've seen my car at one point when I were between Lingy Hut and not. But amazing wildlife full of birds flying around, a few planes. No, that's not wildlife. Yeah, no, it's that's skid off. I've noticed the, the path going up and down it, that, or going up it, that I said. I said I was going to take the zigzaggy path rather than the left hand curved one because even though it looked tougher, it cut out quite a bit of walking on the summit without realising that the summit was closer to the uh, seemingly easier path. <laughs> no good though. So. That must be Carl's side, I'm guessing. Although, God, I can hardly see, I've got that much sun cream in my eye. Anyway, let's get down to, get down to the bottom, get some water boiled, get some tea on, maybe a little plunge. See you in a bit. So that's where we've come down from, Great Calver. A couple of downhill bits there were really steep. I was thinking, I'm not looking forward to coming back up here. And then the very last section. Oh, I like that section on Carrick Fell, where my feet were just slipping under me. But this way is obviously really steep downhill. There were a couple of bits like my feet went, I thought I'd bent my walking poles. So. Climbing up it, I'm not sure. I mean, it's a good hour at least up there, which isn't a problem. But that first section, with a big heavy pack on, got half of my way with car is that plunge pool. Got half of mine are just sort of edging my bets and pitching there. But the only thing with it being really near water. Midges are bad enough up there, and there's thousands here, but I might have to just wait until sunset and then just uh, 
Go for it. We'll see. We'll see. Four hours later than I expected. Oh, Been to oh, even close to me was a oh, I can't tell what's what anymore. <laughs> I want to say that's Isle of Man, but I won't have a clue. Got Reminds me of the skid or in the middle. <laughs> Bakes all that climb yesterday, the one and all the way right. Just lower down from it and then on the right hand side you've got the ridge of Carl's side at the top. <sighs> Long side and all the pike. His midges are doing my head in. And then we've got all the fells I'll be doing first thing tomorrow. stuff. What a view. And you've got Solway Firth and bits of Scotland over there. So a tiny little bit of haze but the sun's gonna I can't see where the sun is. So the sun's directly above me so the sun will be going down and that's a shame. Although sunrise will be good up there. That's an amazing view of Skiddaw. Not back of Skiddaw should I say. Just a few hours to wait now before I can pitch up. Currently, I can't even tell you. I could. Seven o'clock. So just short three hours before the sun sets, apparently. But I'll pitch up about nine o'clock, I think. But I don't know where I'm going to pitch yet. There's sheep everywhere, but a bit other side of this. I don't know if there's a walking path over that side, but we'll see.
morning from Binza. Didn't film setting up. Didn't film packing up. Uh, setting up, we were quite busy up here last night actually. I was up here, let's say about three hours before sunset. Uh, I think there must have been about seven people that come up. Uh, the last two came up and it was apparent they wasn't moving, which isn't a problem, it's not, it's not, it's obviously not my summit. Uh, so it got, it got to about 20 past nine. So I said to him, you here for sunset? She's like, why do you want us to leave? <laughs> I've never felt so rude in my life. Uh, but then it got to half past nine and they got bored and went. But trying to Google. Uh, sunset with what did, what did I say? Five to ten, something like that. I don't know. So where I've pitched, okay. A little bit of green in the middle there, or the, or the lighter green, should I say? Looks like a lovely flat spot. This isn't. Uh, but all around here, just horrendous to pitch up on. I've seen a few photos of people pitched up before, and they've been like literally on the summit somewhere, but didn't fancy that because if people like coming up here late on then chances are they're going to like coming up early doors as well uh, oh, and that is literally in the middle of a path as well but which I weren't right happy about but I thought well by the time I pitched up about 10 o'clock and well I set me alarm for half past four it's now well it's now 20 past four but I've been up since about quarter past three Oh, it's very unlikely to be people coming that way. People usually come from the way I come down there or over there. But lovely little hairs, but still plentiful views. And I think I'm going to wait until I get back to my car, until I get me, my stuff and all that lot back out and have a coffee and something to eat. But yeah. See you in a bit.